Hello and welcome to the Odds Checker betting show. This is your Royal Ascot day one, the Tuesday of Royal Ascot preview. Uh, and I'm your host, George Ellick, and I'm delighted to be joined by Andy Holding. They've tried to make us wear the top hats. We've said no, thank you very much. Andy wants to protect his hair. I just don't want to look like an idiot. But here we are to preview the day's racing, the first day of Royal Ascot. And we are recording this on a Thursday before, so five day decks are in. We don't have final fields. We have a pretty good idea of who's going to be turning up at Ascot on day one. Before we get into it, because this is the first preview we're doing and we're going to be getting through the whole week, so make sure you look out for the other shows on the Odds Checker YouTube channel. Andy, weather is always very important. It has been absolutely boiling for the last mm. few days. We're seeing rattling ground uh, across the country at the moment. Is there any rain forecast? What do we expect uh, will be the, the going come uh, Tuesday next week? Yeah, it's nice to... Um not have sweat dripping down your back and yes. being in a lovely air-conditioned studio mm, for, for once um, rather than swel sweltering. Um, looking at the advanced weather forecast, which is all important, it's kind of shifted a little bit to what it was a week in advance. Um, I was looking last week thinking, God, we're going to get a bit of biblical rain like you had in London um, here the other day. Suddenly it was loads in Shropshire. It was absolutely lots yeah. of Armageddon stuff. Um, but it, that seems to have uh, dissipated completely now and looking at Maybe a bit, of sh bit of, bit of rain on Sunday. Um, you're talking sort of like percentage-wise, 40, 50 percent in the London area, the Ascot area. Uh, nothing on Monday at all. Sorry, did I say Monday? Yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Sorry, the rain. Monday, nothing at all. You might get a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, and good news for the ladies as well on Thursday. Um, it looks glorious on on for Ladies' Day, which is a stark contrast to what we've been having in, in recent times. So, if you if you if you want a horse that's got some good soft ground early season form I'm not sure you're going to get any any appreciable change in what we're going to get at the moment I think it's been a difficult job for the clerk of the course hamstered upon on an advance and he's got obviously got a water to maintain because otherwise you know it could get parched mm. um, but I, I, I don't think he's going to get caught out with um, it, it changing rapidly so it looks like we're going to get decent quick ground for, for the first day and, and that should be very much the um, order of the day all the way through the week Excellent stuff. Uh, well, obviously, weather forecasts can change, as we know, but hopefully we have a pretty good idea now of what we can expect come Royal Ascot. Make sure you do download the Odds Checker app and have a look at the website for all your Royal Ascot betting needs. We have the best prices, bookie offers, free bets, each way terms, and of course, Andy's tips straight to the app every single morning of racing, sometimes even the evening before during these big festivals. So make sure you download I think that's that. that's the case. And you can find I think that's, I think that's those the case. Yep. there. Uh, on then to the racing, this is the Tuesday preview, uh, because we're doing this early for some of the other days we can't preview all of the races, but that is not the case for Tuesday, with all races uh, priced up and up on the site and on the app. And we're kicking off with the Queen Anne, where Modern Games is the marginal favourite at 7-4, to four, Pedivan Spiral at 15-8, to eight, Native Trail 6-1, to one, Chindit is 10-1, to one, uh, Mr Beck is 16-1, to one, 25 to 1 bar those, Andy, take us away with the first race of the week. Well, on her day, I don't think there's any doubt that Inspiral is a match for any horse over a mile, um, as she's proven on, on quite a few occasions. But she, she can, can also throw a bit of a, a bad one in as well. She's got basic big odds on um, by Prosperous Voyage um, at Newmarket last season, um, uh, over on the July course. And then, I don't know whether she was sort of over the top for the season or whatever, but it just, she just didn't fire, did she, in the QE2 behind Bayside. Boyle was obviously a, a shock winner on the day. Um, and obviously modern, modern Games was ahead of her. Now, I don't think you could look at that strictly and say, well, you know, Modern Games is, is a better horse than Inspiral. Just Inspiral yeah. wasn't at her best, simple as that. Um, but I do think the fact that Modern Games comes here with not only one but two good runs under his belt um, might be a significant enough factor for him to uphold that form uh, with um, his main market rival in, in the opener. He was very good on the clock when he won the lock -ins. and the lock is arguably the preeminent trial, isn't it, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, um, for the Queen Anne. So I'd probably have to go with Charlie Appleby's horse. He loves fast ground as well. Um, he's got that run under his belt over the straight track as well to prove that he, he handles um, a stiff mile. Um, and I love the way he quickened up at Newbury against the bias as well. It's always difficult to make ground up the near side at Newbury when, mm. the, when the runners are predominantly middle to far side. So he had to um, 
row, 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 uh, row against the tide that day. Uh, and, and the Appleby horses seem to be in much better form than they were perhaps a month or two ago. So a good, strong, solid favourite for me there in the opener. I'd, I'd also pay a healthy regard as well from an each-way perspective, if you're betting with or without the favourite, for Chindi, yeah. who probably doesn't get the credit he deserves for a, a body of work now which is suggesting he belongs at Group 1 level. You'd always looked in and thought, oh, he's a Group 3, Group 2 horse at best. But he was second in the lock -inge. That is a big step forward to what he, he did in this race last year when he was fourth to Bayeed. I think we're, we're dealing with a horse who's probably you know, £10 to a stone better than he was uh, a year ago. So he's improving as he gets older. The Hannon horses are in good form. We know he loves Ascot as well. He's a course winner and um, you know, he's, he's, he's proven that the straight mile is fine for him. So wherever modern games finishes, you'd like to think that Chindi, at the absolute worst, will be somewhere close to where he is. So working on that basis, if you can bet without the favour on the Dan Shaw firms will, if you can get, I'd say be about a five, six to one shot without the favour, that might be a good bit of each way business as an alternative bet. There you go, Chindi, uh, 10 to one across the board. I don't think we've got a without the fav market probably not. as yeah, yet. Probably um, not. But modern game, seven or four with uh, Coral, uh, ball sports and 10 bet and a couple of others there too now onto the commentary now where river tiber is the 11 to 4 favorite ahead of uh asadna at three to one sea of blue proper punt this morning give me the beat boys is eight to one fandom 12 to one 14 <coughs> to one uh bracerno fuerte and unquestionable also 14 to one 16 to one bar those and this looks a high quality coventry doesn't it yeah andy like i know that fandom uh, as we've We'll speak about later on another show is a horse you hold in high regard but i also know uh, thanks to being on a whatsapp group with you that the george bowie horse the second favorite here three to one asadna is a horse that you've got doing a, a pretty stunning time visually very impressive on debut and matched by the clock yeah um you, you, yourself and, and our esteemed colleague johnny ward were mm. quick on the on the whatsapp chat room um i think it was on the monday wasn't it um after asadna had um blitzed its field Mm. At, um, at Ripon, who would we have thought we were talking about a horse who's, um, you know, such a short price favourite and a well-backed favourite as well, um, having having won a, a track where it doesn't normally produce too many rasks. But well, isn't Al Ali many years ago was second on debut? He went on to win the North. Didn't, didn't even win at Ripon. I know he didn't know, but he ran in a race <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is a good time figure. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's a far cry from the time figure that that race produced to, compared to the one that Sadner did. Uh, we're not the only people. Um, that have got Sadna doing it at a ridiculously good time, almost mm. a time that's like a, a real head scratcher. Um, kind of too good to be true. Too, almost too good to be true. A bit, a bit of a, what we're going to call in the trade now is the Mums Tipple effect. Yeah. Remember when Mums Tipple won that sales race at yeah, yeah. York by seven lengths, and everyone was like, whoa, you know, the, the, the clock you know, watchers were like, you know, drooling over that. And that horse didn't really go on to um, back it up um, uh, over time. It's almost like you get to the point where you think, well, has that horse peaked on its debut? Mm. Uh, so ready was it for its its first run, based on all the homework and all the pre-training and the breeze ups and all that kind of stuff that that, it, that it's been through. But it was a scintillating performance. They were in a real good, strong gallop from the start, and this horse just maintained the gallop all the way to line, kept lengthening, 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 and just basically just didn't stop. Hit the line very strong. And he's, he's been, you know, knocked over in the rush uh, in the markets ever since. I think he was up, so eight, ten to one on the, on, on the Monday, and then, and then he went all the way down. And what he is now, eleven to four, three to one. Um, but he's definitely the one to beat on the numbers. Um, even allowing for the fact that Aidan O'Brien's got a, an above-average colt in the shape of River Tiber. He's done two decent times in Ireland. He's definitely the best of the Irish, but then not quite at the standard of, of a Sadner just yet. But he is progressing. Um, so it's going to be an interesting matchup between the two. Obviously, the draw on the day is going to be very, very crucial. Um, I think Brad Sell won it from Stool 3 last year. Then by and large, I think you want to be drawn closer to a rail. I think, I think that's the, 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 the general rule of thumb. Um, but yeah, Sadner will take a huge amount of beating if he runs somewhere close to that level that he did at Ripon. It was such, he set such a high bar. It's almost, like I say... Um, quite difficult to comprehend really uh, what these two year olds are, are capable of doing nowadays uh, and I'm hoping that we just get the wow factor from it. It's probably the best race or the, the one I'm most looking forward to the most. Um, I don't, uh, George Scott would lynch me if I didn't mention his horse as well. <laughs> uh, watch my tracer who's I think 40-50 to one shot. 40 to one. Yeah, he, yeah I mean he, did, he didn't do anything spectacular on the clock when he won at Yarmouth but 
he, he was very impressive and I, I love the way he went through that race. Um, I think he's a cult of, of, of some quality. And, and Thunder Blue as well, I'm not sure whether Ammo race and I roll the dice with him again, having won the other day at Goodwood, but he clocked a big number as well. Normally a, a time figure of, of that nature yeah. would suggest that he would no, he'd normally be top of the pile going into any, any ordinary Coventry that we'd have on our figures. But such is the standard of the two-year-olds this season that he only comes out second best. But at 20 to 1, for a horse who's second best in our time figures, he, he's certainly worth respect if he does run only nine days on for winning at Goodwood. Just with the, you know, I remember going into Ascot last year and normally, you know, you know, I think your two-year-old numbers are so telling compared to the market. I remember Little Big Bear was one who, you know, came into Ascot with a big reputation but hadn't necessarily clocked the time yet. When you're comparing Issa Sadna with, with River Tiber and you know the, the, you know the regard that River Tiber is held in and you see that Sadna was sent to Ripon the first time out and it probably wasn't expected for him to run that kind of number, do you have to kind of recalibrate or do you have to just go by the clock and say, this is what we know this has run, ignore the noise and just focus on, on yeah. what we have, have, have down on the clock? Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, we're not the only publication that's got cool. Sadna doing what yeah, he yeah. did. I mean, we're not like you know inventing something <laughs> that's not there. I mean, well, you just have to look at the price. The racing, you know? yeah, the racing yeah. post guys have got it. Yeah. You know, time form have got it. Ridiculous. So they've got a, 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 a back catalogue of data to suggest this hmm. horse has run a number way beyond anything that a, a juvenile has ever done going into Royal Ascot, and that's what we've got. Yeah. Um, it's just a case of whether we can reproduce that again. Can River Tiber raise his game to get to the level that the Sadden has already achieved? Or will a Sadden de decline and recoil off that run? He, he put, obviously puts in such a big effort mm. that, like I say, the only way he's down, yeah, almost yeah, yeah. As, as, as it were. Would a slightly below par Sadden still be good enough to, to beat the likes of River Tiber, who's obviously a very smart horse? So it's a fascinating race. I mean, we're going to get a big field. There's other horses to mention as well and um, that have obviously you know run... Uh, ordinarily good times that you'd be thinking oh my god that, that is a, that's a Coventry horse yeah, yeah. but I'd say such is the standard this year and obviously fandom you know we, we, we talk about him um, you know he, he could be uh, you know, a very very smart horse in the making looking at his Keeneland run it's interesting that Frankie Dettori is associated with Wesley Ward as well has opted to go for Gimme the Beat Boys and I think that's one of the reasons why there's been so much money for him I think anything that Frankie's been given the leg up in the last sort of yeah. week with his agent looking to get him on the, the best possible outside rides it, it, it's fairly obvious that they're going to shorten up but I can tell you that his numbers are nowhere near the level of River Tiber okay. even though he's unbeaten yeah. he's got to raise his game to a level beyond almost any recognition so uh, I, I would be surprised if the, the market yeah. uh, reaction to him is right Give me the beat boys, as we say, eight to one, but maybe one to swerve. Uh, Asadna, three to one, River Tiber, 11 to four. Uh, time for the King's Stand now, and Highfield Princess is the five to two favorite, ahead of Cool and Gatta at seven to two. Dramatized, uh, winner at Royal Ascot last year, is six to one. Uh, Manakan, eight to one. Uh, Cannonball, 10 to one, 20 to one, bar those. Andy. Oh, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, you've just got to give a huge amount of respect and praise for, for the Queen operation. Obviously, you know, John the trainer and Sean, who's, um, you know, um, helping out in the background, even though his name's not officially um, <laughs> on, the, on the training license, as it were. But um, I, I know Sean's an integral part of the setup. I, I think his dad will uh, vouch for that. And it's a real family affair as well. I think that all the family really pull their weight. and. <clears throat> This is the flag bearer of the stable. What a great job they've done with this horse. Um, you really have got to doff your cap to them. Winner at Royal Ascot has improved probably almost out of beyond their re re um, recognition um, to be a worthy 5-2 to favourite for the King's Stand. She, she, you know, she won the nunth up last season. Who would have thought that she was winning seven furlong races? Now she's got <laughs> speed to you know, win at the fastest track other than Epsom in the country. Um, and you know we know that... She, uh, a stiff five furlong should be absolutely ideal for her. Um, it was a good run back against Azure Blue uh, uh, in the um, Duke of York. That should got her to a, a good fever pitch for, for her assignment come um, come next week. Um, there's not a lot to be said that can can sort of knock her in any way other than the price. Y you could make a solid case out for it to say that she's a good solid five to two favourite, and why don't we could just row in with her? But there are other angles that I'll, I'm, I'm looking at to suggest that perhaps there's, there's another few that should be considered at, um, at a bigger price. Go on then. Manacan. 8 to 1. 
Again, similar to Highfield Princess, has come through the handicap route. Didn't win at Royal Ascot, unlike Highfield Princess did. Got beat in the five furlong on the Holyrood last season. Only finished fifth. But since then, has absolutely rocketed up uh, in, in um, stature and, and its uh, body of work. Um, won at Ascot later on in the season, clocking a big number. Um, and has been running in sort of listed and group races ever since. Was a really, really eye-catching third in the Palace House when it was drawn on the wrong side. It was a day when then stand side very mm. much held sway. But won its group on the far side. Drifted over towards the near side as well, so lost even more ground. But I thought it was a really good run on soft ground that it probably wouldn't have liked. Loves Ascot, likes fast ground, which is going to get. Hopefully with a good draw on the day, will be on the right side of the track and following, in inverted commas, the right horses, i.e. you know your Highfield Princesses of this world, the real speed balls. And the final cherry on the top as well um, is Frankie de has been booked. Um, I'm sure Wesley Ward was calling at, at, at his... Uh, uh, at, his, at his door to ride Twilight Gleaming, a horse that he's been associated with before. The fact that he no, says, no, I'm a mannequin, that, that's good enough for me as well. Um, so uh, one of the few course and distance winners in the field with a, <coughs> with a real proper preparation for this. Um, hopefully we'll see um, mannequin really establish himself and, and rubber stamp himself as a genuine Group 1 horse in this, in this category. Manikan, 8 to 1, 365, Paddy's, 888, Betfair, Bet Victor, Unibet, and a couple of others. Um, you said there were a couple of options away from Highfield Princess. Any others you want to mention? Yeah, I think you've got to mention Mick Barhi uh, in favourable terms. Um, 28 to 1. Yeah, um, he got badly drawn the day that dramatised one. I think we should mention dramatised as well. I mean, yeah. we almost, a little bit of a segue there into mentioning her. Um, because she, you know, she won a very good Queen Mary in a good time last season and she clocked a good time and she won the Temple Stakes. But the unlucky horse, the eye catcher, was Mick Barhi, who was. Mm switched from his near side draw to go out on the far side and ended up challenging on the slowest part of the track along with Razil. Now Razil ran really well next time at Haydock, it uh, being drawn on the right side. And I think, you know, you've got to talk favourably about, you know, Myth Barhi uh, running so well given, given what happened to it in the race. Um, so yeah, wherever Dramatise finishes, you'd like to think Myth Barhi might be able to at least bridge the gap a little bit and at 28 to 1. Um, is definitely one worth considering at a huge price. Nearby, 28 to 1, that's with Bet Victor and Parimatch. A bit of 25s elsewhere as well. Uh, Paddy Power and a few others uh, in the King's Stand. Um, the St James's Palace States now, and Paddington is the 9 to 4 favourite, joint favourite with Chaldean. Uh, Chaldean and Paddington, 9 to 4. Cicero's Gift, 4 to 1. Uh, Moss Bashir, 7 to 1. Isaac Shelby, 9 to 1. Royal Scotsman, 14 to 1. 28 to 1 bar those. Uh, Paddington and Chaldean can't be separated in the market. Andy, can you separate them? Um, it, interestingly, difficult. I don't think I've ever seen this before. The prices vary. You've got some 2 to 1, some 15 to 8. But they're basically they're joint favourites with every firm. Have take, <laughs> yeah. taken the view not to split them. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real tricky one, this. Um, Chaldean, I don't think, got the press he deserved for winning the Guinness. Everyone's looked to knock him because he seemingly got... Um, you know, a favourable draw on the day. The ground came for him. You know, there's a welter money for him, eight to one into seven to two. Everyone wanted to be with him, but everyone wanted to be against Augustine Rodan and several other little big bears, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. And um, you know, he duly gave Frankie another um, fine moment in the in the sun on on his farewell tour. Um, I, I've got a huge amount of respect for Chaldean. You know, like I said, I think he's a little bit of an under the radar horse, even though he is a Guinness winner. Um, and Paddington's very much the Joker in the pack, isn't he? We still mm. don't know how good he can could be because he he didn't beat the established kind of horses in the in the Irish two thousand. I don't think real real Scotsman turned up and ran the same kind of race as he did in the Giddies. So um, it's it's a bit of a tricky form line. I, I I think it's a very difficult race to choose between those two. And the one I'm a little bit nonplussed about is um, Cicero's Gift. Everyone seems to be mm. championing this horse's chances, but on the time figures that we've got, he's got a huge amount to find. It's possible, but improbable in, in, in my view. Um, I, I did a piece on, on this race again for Odd Shepherd the other day when they got me to look at a few races. I thought Mustabshir is, is a big player. John Gosden does really well in this race. This is a race that he really targets with a, with a, a, a nice horse. And I thought that Slip of the Net was going to be his runner, but unfortunately he blew out in the Heaven Stakes, which is a race that John has often used with the likes of Without Parole, for instance. Uh, so that didn't materialise. And now they're, they're parachuting in Mustabshir who uh, was very impressive at York the other day. 
wasn't a great time figure. He quickened off the front, but he has done good numbers in the past, most notably on debut. He's got a really good turn of foot. He loved the fast ground. I think he's a big player along with Isaac Shelby. In short, my two against the field um, are Isaac Shelby and Mustapshire. Mustapshire is seven to one, uh, three six five, and Bet Victor and Bet UK. Isaac Shelby is nine to one best price. That is with Coral. Uh, Labrooks and VBET and these two against the field in the St James's Palace. On to the Ascot Stakes now where Bring on the Night is 11-4 to favourite. Um, all other horses are currently in the race, so double figure price. A uh, horse with no name, 10-1, to one. Run for Oscar, 11-1. to one. Uh, Novel Legend, 14-1. to one. Newfoundland, 14-1. to one. Laura the Sea, 14-1. to one. Zoffy, Zinc White, also 14-1. to 16-1 to one bar those. And Andy, there's one at a double figure price that you fancy here. There is, yeah. I mean, this race is, you know, called the Ascot Stakes, but it should really be called the uh, Jump um, <laughs> Trainers uh, Stakes. Um, that would be a crazy name. Well, I mean, the the, the role of <laughs> yeah, would the, the, the role of honour is quite incredible. Yeah. Um, Alan King, obviously Willie Mullins, uh, even Jarth Farhi over in Ireland won mm. it um, a few years ago with um, Jenny's Jewel. Uh, Charles Burns won it, um, and even John Joy Neal, uh, back in the day as well. And it, it's it's odd, but. I, I, Nicky, Nicky Henderson has always had a, a predominant runner in it, and yet I don't think he's got an absolutely amazing record. Um, so a horse with no name, I kind of like half get it with her, but um, I'd, I'd maybe prefer, prefer others. Obviously, we're going to have Bring on the Night as a, war, a relatively warm order here, and Willie's got another one we'll talk about in a couple of horses, which seems to have a, a really obvious chance. And just from a handicapping perspective, Bring on the Night, was run up in the race last year to none other than Coltrane, who's now rated 117. Uh, obviously, there's been a dollop of improvement mm. um, from Andrew Baldwin's horse since, but um, this horse's mark has been unaffected, still races off um, 96. So, even retrospectively, it hasn't been adjusted. Um, and Connections have basically left this horse alone ever since, hasn't run since. So. If it gets the brakes at the right time, which didn't necessarily happen last year, then with Ryan Moore on board, it's got an obvious chance of going one better. But I really like Laura of the Sea here. Um, the one thing that has drawn me to this horse was its run in the Chester Cup behind Metier, mm -hmm. when it got absolutely no run whatsoever in the latter stages, but finished its race off very eye-catchingly. I then put it up in my column uh, the next time at Haydock. But unfortunately for Laura the Sea and her supporters, they went no gallop whatsoever. It suited um, Solent Getaway, who made all the running off the front, kicked, and Laura the Sea, try as he might, he just couldn't have the, he didn't have the basic speed to, to get to the other horse in a slowly run race, um, which I don't think should necessarily be counted against him because he's not a horse who is renowned as a quickener. He obviously stays really well. But I think he's absolutely tailor-made for this race. He's going back up in trip to two and a half miles, which based on his Chester Cup run, should really, really suit him. And I did notice um, sort of punctuating the um, predominant uh, big name jump trainers that have won this race. Ian Williams in the last four years has won it with the Grand Vizier and Rushan. So this is a race that I think Ian Williams has kind of like Recognise it, you know, he, he, can, he can do quite well. And obviously, we've got a bracket in Williams is in a you know proper dual, um, dual purpose trainer. Yeah, he's just as good on the flat as he is over jumps. Uh, arguably better on the flat nowadays. So this horse ticks quite a few boxes. But again, in advance of not knowing the draw, he could end up what with a maximum field of twenty, end up being drawn twenty of twenty, and then all of a sudden I'm kiboshed. But um, yeah, I'd be very very hopeful of his chances regardless of, of all the legendary trainers who's in this race with big players, that he'd run really well with a good draw. Uh, 12 to 1 best price at the moment, for, sorry, 14 to 1 best price at the moment for, for Laura the Sea uh, with Paddy Power and Betfair Sportsbook, all firms paying a, a quarter of the four as it stands right now. Could be bigger, more places come the day of the race. Uh, two more races to preview on day one of Royal Ascot 2023. And next up is the Wolferton, where Francesco Clement is the six to one favourite ahead of Saga at 13 to two. King of Conquest, eight to one. Bolshoi Ballet, eight to one. Buckaroo, also eight to one. 10 to one Cadillac, Solid Stone, 14 to one by those. Yeah, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase here because um, it's not a race <laughs> I've got a, a major, major opinion on at this stage. Uh, the one thing I, I, I will say about the horse I'm going to put up here is uh, Poker Face is 
finally, finally going to get his ground. Um, on the two occasions this season, um, he's had soft ground, uh, and I don't think he's handled it. Well, he's, he's handled it well enough, but I don't think we've seen the poker face that we saw last season. His two runs have been good against Ottoman um, Point, sorry, Ottoman Fleet first time up. And he ran okay at Chester behind Point Lonsdale, but that ground was really testing, and I, don't, I think it sucked the life out of him. But he's got a beautiful action, and he was one of the ones that we got huge time figures for when conditions were in his favour, when he was improving last season. Um, so much so that we we pretty much had him down as a group horse um, and I think this listed race is very much well within his compass and again if he gets a good draw on the day I could see him running well Jamie Spencer's been booked so this looks as out to the plan the other one to mention is obviously Saga who mm. skips the Royal Hunt Cup which looked the obvious race for him having finished second in last year's Britannia and unlucky second as well but I think connections with him are probably almost wiped the feet of a mile. They, they keep thinking he's, get, he's getting too far back and he's been look, unlucky over a mile time and time again. So to cut that out, they're running him over a mile and a quarter. And that could easily play into his strengths. Obviously, with Frankie on board for the King, he's going to be hugely popular. I could see him going off favourite. But he is a bit of a tricky customer to win with. So those are the two that I'm drawn to. But Poker Face, I think, is more the uncomplicated one of the pair. Poker face 14 to 1 best price with Hills and with Coral and his main selection there in the Wolferton. And finally in the Copper Horse Stakes, uh, the last race on day one at Royal Ascot, Vauban is the 9 to 4 favourite. I've uh, been backed uh, this morning on Odds Check, a bit of blue around the grids. Absurd is the 8 to 1 second favourite. Point King 9 to 1. Ruling Dynasty 10 to 1. 12 to 1 by those. Yeah, uh, one of the newest races um, on the programme, uh, introduced I think back in 2020. So we haven't got a, a huge amount of data to, to go on here, but I think it was interesting that Roger Varian won the first mm. renewal of um, that particular race um, for uh, connections of his runner this season, um, who I think has got a huge chance if it runs a Merrick. I'm very, very impressed with this horse. Um, 16 to 1. Yeah, first time off a, off a wind operation, made all the difference when he won at Doncaster the day. Again, as time figure buffs were quite impressed with that number. Um, the horse that finished third, I think it was, was, I think it was Educator, it was mm. really, really unlucky the other night at Kempton. Um, and, and obviously Frank, the form, he didn't win, he didn't win, he didn't Frank it with a win, but he, he boosted the form with a, with a really good run. So I do think that race on Town Moor is a really reliable piece of form. Um, I think the further he goes, the better he'll be. Um, and that, like I said, that wins the surgery did him a world of good. Now, obviously, he's up against Vauban, who is very much going to be the talking horse of this particular race, probably even arguably of day one. Um, you're going to get split opinions thinking, well, you know, he's incredibly well handicapped compared to his hurdle mark. We all know yeah. that. I mean, he's 160 over hurdles, isn't it? And he's in an area where normally he'd stand out, um, you know, finishing third in a champion hurdle. But... You know, the simple matter of Constitution Hill, the small matter of Constitution <laughs> Hill and State might have uh, stood in his way. So he is a very, very high class horse. Um, I mean, he, he could look an absolute handicap block, couldn't he? But compared to his jump mark and his French form as well. Um, but it, it, a lot depends on whether he'll get in at the moment. He's currently, because he's, you know, he's, he, he's rating at the moment. Um, 101. He, yeah, he might not necessarily, he might not necessarily mm. get in. So. You get, but you, you, get, you get your money back if you're balloted out. Absolutely, so you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, 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 is, that is the case. So I'm, I'm not going to tip him just in case he doesn't, but I, I'm going to go for something I think will get in and has got a really big chance based on um, his time figure at, at Doncaster and the fact that Roger Varian um, trains him for previous winning connections. Any concern that um, Postaleo is also the same connections entered in do the Doyler book for both at the moment? Yeah, yeah, I mean... I'd certainly have a look at that one as well. I thought, he was, I thought he was hugely impressive when he won at Hamilton. Again, time figure-wise, that was a very strong race. I know it was at Hamilton, but it was a good quality class mm. too. Um, that there was, there was, um, there's plenty of substance to it. Um, and and you know, that was, it was a cracking training performance. I think he'd been off the track for nearly the thick end of two years. So he's like, likely to improve for the run. So, yeah. Let's, let's say a, Ro a Roger Varian... Um, a choice of um, <laughs> wait till final day. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. I think it. that's probably probably. But and America would be the, the pick of the two. America sixteen to one with a few firms, um, including Coral Hills, a couple of others. Postaleo fourteen to one best price. That's with Bet three six five. And there you have it. That is our day one Royal Ascot preview 
tie it up. Thank you very much to Andy as ever uh, for his tips and insight. We're going to record our day two preview now and then a joint day three, day four and day five preview. So make sure you check out the Odds Checker YouTube channel where you can find all of those previews and future Odds Checker betting shows as well. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this or listen to this. Make sure you download the Odds Checker app for the very best prices. Bookie offers free bets and Andy's tips for Alaska should be coming through the night before the racing as well. So hopefully a couple of winners in there. Watch the other previews. And in the meantime, please do ensure that you're gambling responsibly.